Welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm Kennedy Holland. And I'm Haley Shore. This is Washita News. It's Battle of the Ravine Week and our rivalry with Henderson is underway. Chase Hartzell has a story on record-setting player TJ Cole. Cole, the senior, out of Pleasant Grove. Got a hole this time. Goes to the three. Goes to the two. Goes to the one. Two. The Puddles Land. Washita is back on top. TJ Cole, a senior running back for Washita, continues to impress as a leader and a player on the field. His football journey is a notable one, and it all started by looking up to another football player in the family. Here's my older brother. Um, we're like 10 years apart, but um, he played for Texas High School uh, in Texarkana. He played with uh, Ryan Mallett, so like I got to watch Ryan Mallett start off in high school, and I also got to watch my big brother play, and um, he, he's, he's been my inspiration throughout the years. In addition to his brother's influence, Cole credits his Texas roots for developing his determination on the field. Everything is like football, football, football in Texas. Um, it's super competitive no matter what level you're in, no matter what school, district, uh, just classification. It's just competitive at all levels. So I was very thankful that it gave me the passion to uh, compete like this. Once at Washita, it was this passion that allowed Cole to develop a positive, competitive relationship with fellow running back Kendall Givens. Me and TJ, um, we kind of got close um, my, my freshman year here, so the, the COVID year. It was summer workouts, and uh, me and TJ were, were trying to compete. I had a mindset in uh, coming here and, and trying to play immediately. Um, and so that guy pushed me, and I pushed him, and, and we just kind of took off from there. Over the past three years, Cole and Givens have developed a deep mutual respect and friendship. I got a lot of love for him. He got a lot of love for me, and um, we just... I feel like we make each other better. We're happy for each other. Like whenever he scores, I'm like one of the first people running up to him, celebrating him for his, for what he accomplished that at that very moment, and um, vice versa either way. And we just we feed off each other. In his time at Washita, Cole has collected many accolades. In addition to a GAC record for most rushing yards in a season, Cole is a first-team All-American and the new OBU career rushing touchdown leader. If you ask him, though, that's not what he hopes to be remembered for most. I've left a good mark just being a player here, but I just want people to remember me as who I was like off the field, just how I just make people laugh. I bring a lot of energy to different situations. I try to make light of terrible situations too, but um, just how I am off the field, just not caught up in all the other stuff. One thing is certain, TJ Cole's impact will be felt in the Tiger locker room and record book for years to come. This is Chase Hartzell reporting for the Washita News Show. Thank you, Chase, and congratulations to TJ Cole on all of his athletic accomplishments. Leadership Connections, a new student ministry, is providing opportunities for freshmen to learn about and invest time in leadership and service activities. Kaylin Clay sat down with campus leaders to talk about the program. It's very evident that Washita's campus is truly considered a hub for leadership and servanthood in many students' eyes. Campus Ministries is helping freshmen get acquainted with this idea by introducing them to various service activities that they can get involved in right here on campus. Now let's hear a little bit more about Leadership Connections. Every other week, four upperclassmen students lead freshmen and introduce them to different guest speakers from different campus organizations. I had the opportunity to visit with one of these leaders in the Donley. Yeah, so Leadership Connections is a really great way for freshmen to be involved on campus ministries um, because it really tells them about all of the different opportunities that they can have on campus, um, introduces them to different leaders on campus, and really helps them to get a perspective on all of the different things that they can do. This program exposes freshmen to leaders on campus and allows them the opportunity to make a connection and engage in their speaking. The freshmen are allowed to ask questions to those people, um, really get a feel for how they lead on campus and what they're enjoying and maybe have an idea of how they'll be able to be involved when they're upperclassmen. Well, this group has been meeting every other Wednesday for lunch right after noonday, and we really are just so proud of their efforts and in investing in our campus. For the Washita News Show, I'm Kaylin Clay. Back to the studio. Thanks, Kaylin. Guard the Tiger, a bonfire, and of course, the big game are all taking place this week. Josh, what does the weather look like for this week? I am glad everyone is safe this week as we 
had an intense weekend of storms on Friday. 18 tornadoes touched down that night, destroying many buildings throughout the region. I personally was out of town. However, I heard that a lot of people had to take shelter in the dorms. We won't be seeing any more severe weather throughout the rest of the week though. Be prepared for some really cold temperatures coming up. It's been in the 70s for far too long. There is a front that is going to be moving in on Friday that will bring some rain and cold temperatures that actually could hit freezing. Be prepared for some temps in the lower 50s on Saturday as the Battle of the Ravine takes place. And be warned, those of you guarding the Tiger Friday night, it is going to be really cold. Make sure you wear a jacket while out guarding. Next week is going to stay cool, so let's hope we can keep these colder temperatures throughout the rest of the fall season. Numbers are provided by AccuWeather. Back to the desk. Josh, I'm glad to see great weather ahead. This is our 95th Battle of the Ravine, and what a road it has been. Chloe Velleman has our Roar Rundown. Welcome to the Roar Rundown. I'm Chloe Velleman. The men's cross country team competed in the GAC championship, finishing in fourth place out of eight teams. The top finisher for the Tigers was Whit Lawrence coming, to, coming in 10th place. Evan Armitage crossed the finish line next in 14th place, followed by Cade Swindle in 20th, Lawson Sanders in 21st, and Jalen Becko in 25th. Three Tigers earned all GAC honors with Whit Lawrence making first team and Armitage and Swindle making second. The team finished the season with a fourth place win with a total of 90 points. The Lady Tigers cross country team earned their first ever GAC championship win, coming in first by 14 points in the GAC tournament. The top runner was Taylor Keith, who took third, and coming in sixth with JC McGregor. Rounding out in 10th place, we have Kate Noctigal, Macy Cash in 11th, and Mackenzie Davis in 12th. Five Tigers made all GAC honors with Keith and McGregor on first team and Noctigal, Cash, and Davis on second team. Coach Guyman was named GAC Coach of the Year, this being his first while here at Washita. The team took first with 42 points, ATU next with 56, and in third, Oklahoma Baptist with 87. Freshmen Riley Brazil and Courtney Hansen of the Washtaw Volleyball team each earned their second GAC Player of the Week honors after finishing the regular season with a pair of wins. Brazil racked up a total of 279 kills this season, with Hansen having a total of 992 assists. The duo helped the Tigers with a 3-0 win over Arkansas Tech on senior night and then a 3-1 win over Southern Arkansas on the road. This undefeated week gave Washita the number four seed in the GAC tournament that will be held in Shawnee, Oklahoma this weekend. The Lady Tigers are set to start GAC tournament play on November 5th with number five seed East Central. Evan Jordan was named soccer all-conference winner last Thursday for the 2022 season. He earned a spot on the all-GAC honorable mention team thanks to his leading of the team this season in points. He is currently tied with two others for seven points, has 39 shots, 22 shots on goal, and three goals also tied with two others. This is Jordan's second all-conference honor after earning a spot on the honorable mentions team his freshman year in the spring of 21. In his three-year career, Jordan has racked up six career goals, six assists, 18 points scored, and 84 total shots. The women's soccer team capped its fourth consecutive winning season with a record of 9-5-5. and five. They finished second in the Great American Conference with a record of 6-1-5 and five after their first round loss to Oklahoma Baptist with a 29-second remaining score put Oklahoma Baptist up 1-0. The Washtaw Tiger football team held firm with their on-the-road 40-18 victory over Southeastern Oklahoma State on Saturday. This was the Tigers' 10th win, which gave them the title of Great American Conference champions. Washtaw trailed Southeastern 10 to nothing in the first four minutes of the game, but limited them to just eight points more through the rest of the game. The Tigers scored 19 points in the second quarter thanks to Gabe Goodman's pair of field goals, a 10-yard passing touchdown from Riley Harms to Connor Flanagan, and a rushing touchdown by TJ Cole. With just 34 seconds left before halftime, Washtaw had its 19-18 lead. Washtaw put 21 more points on the board, outscoring Southeastern in the second half. Cole put a 28-yard passing touchdown to Justin Dean on the board with 9.06 remaining in the third quarter. The Tigers scored again, this time with 39 yards out from Harms to Flanagan later in the third. The Tigers scored three more times before finalizing their victory over Southeastern State. Cole finished with 25 carries for 143 yards and two rushing touchdowns, while Harms finished 12 for 19 for 186 yards with two touchdowns and one interception. Flanagan had 94 yards for six receptions and two touchdowns. This GAC championship is Washtaw's sixth in the 11-year 11, 11 history of the league, following the titles in 2011, 2014, 2017, 2018, and 2019.
This Friday, the Washita women's basketball team has its season opener. They will open their season at home against Champion Christian College. Tip-off is set for 6 p.m. inside Bill Vining Arena. If you can't be there to watch the game, you can tune into the Washita Sports Digital Network YouTube channel where the game will be broadcast live. It is officially Battle of the Ravine Week here on the Washita campus. Not only must the Reddies watch out for the pranks across the street, but they also must watch out for the Tiger football team. Washita has won the last five battles in a row, and now the Tigers lead the all-time series 45-43-6 after Gabe Goodman's 53-yard field goal that won the 2021 game and their loss for the past five years. The Reddies must feel an avid sense to make a comeback. We'll just have to see who comes out on top for this year's Battle of the Ravine. The Tigers are set to cross the street to take on the Reddies this Saturday, November 12th. Kickoff is set for 2 p.m. at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. That's all for the War Rundown this week. Happy Battle of the Ravine Week. I'm Chloe Villeman. Back to you. Thank you, Chloe. As mentioned earlier, Guard the Tiger is taking place this week to keep the Henderson Reddies away from our mascot. Monday night, the seniors guarded. Tuesday night, the juniors guarded. Tonight, the sophomores will guard. And Thursday night, the freshmen will guard the Tiger. Thursday night will be a campus-wide event complete with activities and booths from social clubs partaking in Guard the Tiger. But to kick off this event, we will have a bonfire and a pep rally at 6 p.m. Battle of the Ravine is an exciting week. It's also a scary week. There's a prank war going on between Washington and Henderson. I even saw some cop cars in the Maddox parking lot last night. Goodness. Well, this is my first Battle of the Ravine week, and I'm already experiencing a little bit of the animosity between the two. Well, there's a, a lot to happen, but that's all we have for you today. Be sure to follow us on Instagram to keep up with the daily Washington news. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.